Great, so in three, two, Good evening. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, March 7th, 2022. In accordance with the board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene as an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast to Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as in requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slade, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jose? Present. Mr. McMillian? Here. Ms. Hen? Here. Mr. Kuhn? Here. Mr. Offerman? Here. Thank you. Ms. Slate, thank you. Please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Augusto? Ms. Anderson? Dr. Boswell McComas? Present. Ms. Charlie Green. Mr. Hartlove. Here. Dr. Yarborough. Dr. Zarchin. Ms. Rungfar Sangaroon. Here. Ms. Lowry. Dr. Holmes? Mr. Corns? Present. Mr. Dixit? Present. Ms. Ferguson? Present. Mr. Saris? Present. Ms. Shea? Present. Dr. Wisted? Present. Dr. Grimm? Ms. Hetzler. Mr. Plate. Here. <clears throat> Ms. Woldridge. Present. Ms. Stansberry. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. I think that's it, Ms. Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Uh, good evening, everybody, again, and welcome to the Building and Contracts Committee. A few housekeeping items. We have many contracts to review um, tonight. So if committee members, I hope, have taken some time to review this prior to the meeting today. We have many staff members here as well. So let's be cognizant of everyone's time and uh, consolidate your questions the best you can. If a member has a hard stop, please let us know in the chat at least 15 minutes prior to your scheduled departure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hartlow and Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed with presenting the first contract. Uh, thank you, George Saris, HRIS manager. Hi, um, Chris Hartlow, and I'm, I'm the chief financial officer. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Saris, could you please proceed with the first thank contract? You. Uh, the first item, JLE 614-20, Bridges in Mathematics. This is a contract modification for the continued use of the mathematics program in the Department of Academics, and we're requesting approval to increase, increase spending authority by $5,150,039 with uh, one awarded vendor approved by the board in April 2020. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. Thank you. The next item, ASI 807-22, Elementary Visual Art Textbooks. 
This is a new contract for an elementary visual art textbook for the Office of Visual Arts. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $1,153,770. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Committee members, any questions? Um, I do have one quick question. I see that the contract will be provided for grades one, three, and five. Um, what about grades two and four in kindergarten? Go ahead, Ms. Shea. Okay, thank you, Mr. Saris. Thank you, um, Ms. Jose, for that question. Good afternoon, Chair Jose and, and board members, as well as all the BCPS guests. Um, the students in those grade levels will have access, but the purchase for teachers allows them the flexibility to use those resources with multiple grade levels. So in terms of the rollout plan, we identified every other grade level so that we could span the grade levels for primary through intermediate. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Ms. Shea, and thank you for your response. Sure. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item is ARA 203-22, Materials of Instruction Discount Program. This is a new cooperative contract for the purchase of a wide range of classroom instructional materials and educational products for the Department of Academics. Approval is requested for a five-month contract with the option for two one-year extensions with 16 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1.15 million. And as we have done in the past, we're cooperating with Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And uh, that accounts for the, the five month and the two year extensions that are uh, being adopted in our recommendation to parallel their agreement. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item is NBU 513-17, modification of the Orton Gillingham Training and Consultation product uh, co uh, contract to provide for continual professional development and coaching using the Orton Gillingham strategies for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $33,400, bringing revised total contract spending authority to $658,000 to uh, see us through the end of this contract term this school year in June 2022. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Harris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JBO 712-22, AVID Center Program. Uh, this is a new sole source contract for the AVID College Readiness System for the Department of Academic Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2.5 million. And I'll just add that this is one of the very few sole source contracts that we would bring to the board because of the proprietary nature of the AVID program, which uh, we've been using for 20 years here at BCPS. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Committee members, any questions? Ms. Jones, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Dean. Mr. Sarris, what we're paying for, is it is it just for access to the college readiness system acres, or is it or is it beyond that? Uh, it includes a license to the materials as well as professional development. And I think that uh, Dr. Wisted may want to expand on my brief summation. Sure. I, well, I was going to say similar um, things to that. Um, we also continue to grow, um, but yes, the 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 
each school has access to the resources that are there. There's professional development with that as well. Um, and membership is required to maintain the status and be and continue to use those materials. So I don't know if that helps clarify. Oh, I'm sorry. So are you saying that <clears throat> this is for membership or is this for the materials and access to to the, the AVID system? It, um, it, it goes ha hand in hand. OK, so it's all together. Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you, committee members. Any more questions? Um, hearing none, Mr. Sears, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, ASI 815-22, is a summer program for high school students experiencing homelessness. This is the new cooperative uh, administration program for summer enrichment experiences for students experiencing homeless, the Department of Academic Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder contract spending authority of $400,000. And in this case, the Y of Central Maryland is the uh, approved provider. Uh, and we're funding this through both the McKinney-Vento and Title I grants. Thank you, Mr. Saris, and I see this was approved by the Curriculum Committee uh, on February 17th, 2022. Yeah. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. Thank you. The next item, LLY 407-22, Private Duty Nursing Services. This is a competitively bid contract for private duty nursing services for the Office of Health Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 10 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1.85 million. Thank you, Mrs. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Uh, here, none. Please proceed with the next contract, Mrs. Sarris. Thank you. Uh, the next item, LLY 416-22, Specialty Paper and Envelopes. This is a new competitively bid contract for specialty paper and envelopes for the Office of Copy and Print Services. Approval is requested for a five-year term with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $1.025 million. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Uh, hearing none, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JMI 631-17, modification of information technology hardware. This modification will provide for the continued purchase and or lease to own of information technology hardware and software related to network operations of the Department of Information Technology, facilities management and strategic planning, school safety and schools. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $16 million, bringing revised total spending authority to 57 million 178 thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars with thirty nine uh, vendors approved by the board in 2017 and in this instance we are aligning uh, this is a cooperative agreement uh, through the lead agency uh, meek and maryland education enterprise consortium and it's uh, sized based on our needs through uh, 2023 Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Mr. Kuhn, I believe you have a question. I do, thank you. Um, Mr. Saris, and I don't know if you have this level of detail, uh, so you may have to ask Mr. Corns about this. I'm, I'm curious, because this is a, a rather large um, increase or modification. Is this just adding a year to this contract or is it an actual increase over what we had planned to spend? 
Uh, these are all uh, budgeted funds within our existing level of services. Uh, the expansion of services primarily relates to capital projects and uh, our ability to continue upgrading bandwidth and uh, VOIP, but um, the core uh, services are existing and I'll let Mr. Corns add to that if he'd like. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me, this is Pedro Augusto. I'm on the call as well. Uh, yeah, so this, Mr. Coons, thanks for the, uh, the question. So this is in alignment with our year uh, over year spend. So the request is for additional um, spending authority to cover, uh, and, and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, this is going through an additional uh, five years, I believe. Um, and also uh, what we're doing is, um, oh, sorry, the, the 16 million um, request is for the upcoming fiscal year. It's also going to allow us to align with the period of performance end date of the contract vehicle that we're using the meet contract vehicle just to make sure we're not um, obligating um, any funds or services that are not in conjunction with an active uh, contract vehicle. So um, it, it is not it's in alignment with the existing spend that we've done for our network equipment. Right, so this has come to us and you can see this mm -hmm. is probably the third time we've talked to this for for some kind of modification or an increase and it's a significant amount of money. So I don't know. I mean, do you have an overall plan where all this money is going to go? Because I see an awful lot when I when I see 39 vendors um, and I see, you know, the description down below, which I've read, it sounds like you can basically go you could spend money in lots of different places and I I'm just curious are there are there focused plans as to why you need this increase and what you're focused on sure and <clears throat> Mr. Corns can add but we are this is for uh, the entire network infrastructure which includes um, all of our core switches um, for network and this is for the lease and ongoing buyback programs this also includes um, the uh, security back end, any of the firewalls. So this is a, this is a, the reason there is a large price tag. It is because it is for a large scale, um, large scale. The overall network operations. This also includes, um, as you can recall, the addition of the firewalls that I mentioned, which were unexpected um, post ransomware. We uh, procured three Palo Alto. Uh, firewalls um, that are included now in the ongoing lease costs. Okay, did I, yeah, I mean, as, you, thank you. I, I appreciate it. It's and and perhaps I don't think this is probably the place, but yeah. it would make sense for you to probably brief the board on your plans overall um, to kind of give us a. We've had lots of disparate discussions with Mr. Corns in the sure. past, especially when we're talking about IT spend and mm -hmm. uh, there are other IT you know, uh, contracts today. I'll be asking about the Windows um, based devices next. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's a lot of money. It's going to be well spent and we just really need to understand it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. This is Miss Hen. I have a question. Go ahead, Miss Hen. Thank you, um, Mr. Gusper. This is for you. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, this is a follow up to Mr. Kuhn's um, question, and I agree the board needs to be briefed on these project plans at a high level, um, not details on each one, but there's a lot here. And I agree we need to invest in our infrastructure, um, particularly with providing adequate um, bandwidth to our schools. Um, that's been a huge area of concern of mine, particularly with standardized testing. Um, since that's gone online and making sure our schools are up and running. Um, but just the more and more we, we rely on connectivity, we absolutely need that. And security, and I hear what you're saying about firewalls and the need to invest there. But because there are so many moving parts, mm -hmm. I'd like to see is a breakdown of um, the replacement cycles on these and what is planned upgrades versus what are new investments 
what is moving to the cloud that we can anticipate um, moving off prem mm -hmm. and so forth. We need to see a breakdown. I, I'm, I'm approving this be, or will support approving this. However, we need to see more detail and a breakdown of what what's driving these costs and, and the buckets. So I'm yeah. with Mr. Kuhn. I, I really need to see a report of these these various areas because it's it's everything here, as you said. And yes, makes, just, we can't we shouldn't be investing, but to do our due diligence, we need to see that detail. No, and and, and that makes sense, Ms. Hen. And Mr. Kuhn. That does Thank make you. Sense. Any more questions, committee members? A hearing none. Mr. Saris, please proceed with the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JMI 64308, Microsoft Premier Support Services. Uh, this is a contract modification for the continued use of Microsoft Premier Support Services. And approval was requested to extend the contract for five years and increase contract spending authority by $1.4 million, bringing total contract spending authority to uh, $2.8 million. Thank you, Mr. Saras. Mr. Kuhn, you have a question? I, I do have a quick question, um, Mr. Augusto. Um, you, I recall during our budget discussions, one of the highlighted points was to expand um, our help desk. And I think the line item was 3.9 or $4 million. It stood out as an increase. Um, is this part of that or is, is this a separate cost? Because I yeah, know this, this is like your support, right? Right. So you're absolutely. So this is a separate cost. This is the stand up. This is the premier service package that we get through Microsoft. This allows our technicians access to their uh, library of materials, um, information about patches. Um, it allows us to call if we have issues um, or uh, support for mm -hmm. creating images that go on the equipment. So you're, you're absolutely right. This is an internal cost for our support that we get from Microsoft. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that it has nothing to do with the expanded help desk services that you also have added or that has been added to the budget going forward, correct? That is correct. All right, thank you. Yes. Mr. Keenan, that you were very close. It's 4.9 million and those are for actual field technicians and we've only requested that money. We uh, we haven't got haven't contracted it yet. Right, so while we have a contract to provide those services, uh, in order to expand the services, we'll need an appropriation uh, from Baltimore County government. All right, thank you. Sure. Committee members, any more questions? You're hearing none. Mr. Sears, please proceed with the next contract. Yes, thank you. Uh, LLY 400-22, Windows-based devices. This is a new competitively bid contract for Windows-based devices for the Division of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a five-year term with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $40 million over that term. And this will be uh, a leased uh, contract similar to the others that we've used over the past uh, nine years in our one-to-one -one device program. Thank you, Mrs. Saris. Um, I do have a few questions, but I'll see. Ms. Hen, do you have any questions? I do, Mr. but I'll hold mine to the end. All right, Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. I believe you do. I'm have... sorry, John John has a question. I oh, sorry, John. Probably go <laughs> yes, go ahead, Mr. Offerman. Yes, with, uh, with the change, we're uh, to, to to all the uh, to to all Chromebooks, who who are major users of, of the devices? Yes. Uh, good evening, Mr. Offerman. So good question. So <clears throat> this particular ask is to um, <clears throat> the replacement of our computing devices for the roughly eighteen thousand employees through our refresh sec, uh, schedule, which is on a um, 
this is through the four year term. Uh, this also includes uh, 750 replacement devices that which we keep in stock that'll that will be a that will allow us to very quickly if we need to swap out devices for staff and then also it also includes the um, replacement refresh of the CTE fine arts magnet lab uh, equipments out there as well. So it's it's everything um, except the student Chromebooks. Uh, and a second question would be, uh, if you don't mind, uh, has any uh, thought been or anybody looked at using uh, having uh, some of these devices used by staff that 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 uh, that might be able to, to be replaced by uh, by our Chromebooks? Yeah, I'll let cheaper. Yeah, yes, I understand. Yeah, there is a, a definite lower price point for Chromebooks. Um, Jim, do you want to? shed any light on that? Sure thing. So um, thank you, Mr. Offerman. Um, we have uh, been issuing our Chromebooks to our staff um, that uh, are working through ESPBC, uh, our paraeducators. So those individuals are using Chromebooks. Uh, the shift for these devices that are listed in here, um, there are both Windows laptops, Windows desktops, um, that we've uh, gone out to bid for. So this is for a uh, refresh that would include individuals like our front office uh, secretarial staff, our uh, building service workers, um, individuals that are using um, softwares that are focused in on uh, PC uh, pieces. So I, I believe we've hit the right level for the individuals that can use Chromebooks versus not. Um, we have been um, investigating the idea with um, some of our more uh, recent learning about uh, virtual um, uh, uh, teleworking and things of that nature where in a in the drop we need to pivot individuals that we are going to investigate whether or not a desktop versus a laptop is more warranted but um, we have done the work uh, to uh, lean in on our staff that can use um, one device versus the other thank you very much and uh, and as usual uh, I certainly, uh, I, I certainly trust your judgment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Um, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. Um, I, I have a few follow up questions. Thanks, John, for asking those questions. They help. Um, so, first question uh, I'm using one of these elite books to um, join this meeting right now. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is what's issued to all the teachers. Is, is that accurate? Yes. Um, OK, so. At the end of the lease period, do we own these computers or can we buy them for like a dollar? I know, George, you're involved in setting up the leases, so I'm just curious as to what happens at the end, because this machine is in. Fantastic order um, and and I'm just wondering what is going to happen. Um, I mean, I love to I like to refresh and get new things and that's great, but I'm just curious to start with what are we going to do with these machines so mr kuhn um uh, mr gusto if you don't mind me jumping into this one yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. sure thank you um so mr kuhn we, we do not structure our leases on uh, dollar buyouts we actually are using fair market value pricing uh meaning that uh, the device in your hand has residual value so we are um either responsible to turn them back or pay uh um it's it's not a, a huge amount of money, but it's a lot more than a dollar. Um, one of the main issues that we run into is that our warranties also align with our leases. So uh, we've been able to do uh, parts of repair on the device uh, that you're that you're holding now. But after this lease cycle, that won't be the case anymore, and we'll be held accountable for any repair if we were to buy these outright. Okay, because I see the the price point is pretty high at thirteen fifty a piece, and that's a lease cost uh, for a device. So that seems um, that seems on the high end. Uh, and yeah, uh, Mr. Kuhn, um, and then that thirteen fifty is is not just the device. So it is a package. That's the uh, the laptop, port replicator, monitor, and then also the four year accidental damage. So during that four year period. If something were to happen with it, you'd get the replacement um, of that device. So it is. Uh, so think of it as a package for each individual unit. And that's 
Good to know. Thank you. You're um, and then moving on real quick to the computer labs, because uh, that's a significant dollar amount, and I think it's great. Um, two questions. It, it, it mentions CT, CTE fine arts and magnet programs. Um, if schools don't have any of those things, I would still think there, there, there could be or should be a computer lab available to those students. Um, and if there's 230 computer labs, that's, that's a lot of labs for secondary schools. Are they in every school or am I mistaken? Yeah, Jim, do you know? I, that I sure. Don't know. So, Mr. Kuhn, where we work very closely with um, uh, our uh, partners in uh, uh, CNI to make sure that we're aligning our resources to where they're needed. So, when a curricular call is made to have a certain kind of device, uh, which is why we focused in on CTE, fine arts, and magnet, there is a curricular need for those devices. Um, Every other student in the building carrying a device that is aligned to their curricular need um, being their Chromebook. So uh, we put those labs where they're needed based on the uh, curriculum that is being offered in that school. And so uh, our heaviest lift uh, with devices is predominantly with our, like, like you've seen listed, the CTE Fine Arts and Magnet curricula that call for specialized software uh, in order to run, whereas uh, our um, regular or general education students, uh, the, the Chromebook is uh, useful for what they're going to be working on. Okay, I see Ms. Shea actually right. added so, something to the chat, so that's helpful. Yes, sir, I just added that all of our schools have fine arts and all of our high schools have CTE courses. And then of course we have specific schools that have magnet programs. Great, thank you. One last question. I know this is Windows based. I'm just curious, do we have any Mac based labs or devices in in our system? And do we support that somehow? Because I guess it wouldn't be covered if they're not window based. Mr. Keen, our, our, um, our platform is, is uh, Windows. And so um, I, I can't say that we don't have one or two Macs around, but uh, they're not centrally supported or refreshed uh, as our Windows bases are, which is our our core function. Thank you very much for all those answers. Um, uh, George, Mr. Saris, could you, outside of this meeting, could you provide us the lease schedule uh, so that we have a better understanding of delivery and refresh and 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 you know, kind of like the Excel spreadsheet that shows the money over the years, how that yeah, works. We the staggered, you know. Right. You're, you're correct, and I'll I'll just add that that this fits into that schedule as well as it fits into the six million dollars in projected savings that we have that we're going to see in FY twenty three, which I think we mentioned during the budget work session, but we'll. Um, provide that an updated spreadsheet for you. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, so does CNI or IT have an inventory of all software used along with the hardware requirements? And is that what was used to develop um, the plans for the um, lab refreshes? Ms. Hen, as a matter of fact, we uh, are finalizing our software catalog as as we speak. Uh, the uh, CNI has been our primary focus this year, and quite honestly, they are our uh, heaviest lift, uh, if you will. Uh, they have the most uh, um, resource intensive uh, software. Uh, there, with one one exception in fine arts, with our uh, Adobe Premiere uh, in our video editing. So. Um, Yes, we worked with CTE to develop the um, the spec for the devices that we would bring in. So in the bid itself, you'll see that we have a, um, uh, I forget the name that we used on it, but it's basically our kind of general Windows-based uh, laptop and uh, desktop. And then we also included in this a higher end one that's designed for more of the robust needs that uh, require higher memory and uh, a different CPU. Okay. So we, we have a mix here um, in in the labs of that higher end and the general one. Did I understand that correctly? 
So there, there are four, there are four devices that we went out to bid for, Ms. Hen, and so we would not necessarily mix some of those computers in each lab, but as the lab itself would be driven, driving what we would need based on the curriculum instructed, that's what would guide us to procure either the the higher end device or the the um, general use device. Okay, and I it has been brought to my attention that some of our STEM. Um, courses are also in need of higher processing um, that are outside of these areas. So that that's what prompted that question. Um, and I don't know that those labs, they may be using the same lab, so they may be OK. But I, I want to make sure that we are inventorying that and that the, those students needs are met as well. Because they don't fall into one of the categories mentioned here. We actually had a, um, a very uh, productive meeting today in which uh, CT and Fine Arts is uh, working through um, our lab inventories to make sure that we're aligning resources to needs. And if I can just add to that, I was going to echo the same thing. Um, Ms. Hen, we also make sure in my department that our content directors are communicating so that if, for example, our science area had a course that had needs that differed from the labs that um, or the um, needs identified by the CTE and fine arts team, we would make sure that that was also included. Great. And are we talking when we talk about these labs? And, and this has come up, I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback that, so th I, I know the needs are great here, so this is exciting that this is happening. Um, are we talking about full refreshes of all of the, re of, of the equipment in the lab? 100% refresh? Um, it's a little, I'll add that. Uh, yeah, so we are looking at, because the, the count that we have is based on the count that we had of devices in the lab. Now, what we're doing, obviously, it's gonna be on a staggered approach. Uh, because we don't have the resources to hit every lab within a week, but um, we're um, a part of working with Megan's team is understanding the age. So which which labs are in, in more of need than others and target those. But this is a refresh of all equipment, all um, computers. Great, and, and can staff request to be prioritized on that list and is that something they can work through with their administrators on? Because I know some are have more desperate needs than others. What what I would ask, and obviously I would have that coordinated with curriculum. Um, as with any request for a, uh, for prioritization, we also want to make sure we have a justification. So, um, you know, we'd like to know, you know, is it because the equipment is aging or our courses, you know, is it impacting the ability to run through any of this coursework there through the uh, CT programs because certain software isn't working on computers, those kind of things. That would be helpful. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gasto. That was actually a really good uh, response. I had something similar. Okay. Um, are there any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Saros, could you please proceed with the next contract? You are on mute, George. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, MBU 520-16, modification, food products, commercial and commodity. This is a consent to the assignment of this contract from Made Right Specialty Foods LLC to Made Right Specialty Foods Incorporated. There are 28 other award uh, contractors on this original contract from 2016. There are no changes to spending authority just in the uh, corporate structure of this uh, one of these 28 vendors uh, due to an acquisition. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mrs. Harris, please proceed with the next contract. Uh, thank you. Pete, do you want to do this or I think I have the next one, but. You want to take care of the next and then I'll come back? Sure. So I think the next one uh, is the last one I have. 
which is LLY 406-22, and that's modification of the workforce uh, management systems and related products and solutions, uh, which is a long way of saying our new timekeeping system. Uh, so this contract modification will provide for the continued use of timekeeping software for the Department of Fiscal Services. Uh, approval is requested to extend the contract for one year uh, with the uh, contractor the board approved in November, which is uh, the UKG uh, Kronos product that we have begun implementation on. This uh, replaces the software that we lost, uh, an older version of the software we lost in the cyber attack, and we're moving to a web-based uh, product uh, using this cooperative contract. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Mr. Kuhn, do you have any questions? No, thanks. Uh, committee members, any more questions? I have one, Ms. Joes. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, just a brief one. So the, the spending authority is not changing on this contract, right. We're adding a year to it? Correct. We're just, uh, because we wanted to accelerate the implementation of this software we used, uh, we, we did a, an, a sort of a modified RFP where we evaluated vendors, uh, but we, uh, we also elected to use a uh, cooperative agreement uh, that was available to us through one of the large national consortiums. So this, uh, this pricing is really a five year, the contract spending authority is really over five years. For example, the, the annual license fee is about 445,000. Um, but this year, which is year one of the contract, we have a $315,000 implementation uh, cost for uh, installing and configuring the software. And then we have uh, the uh, the purchase of the 200 time clocks and the annual maintenance on that. So this total amount hasn't changed, and it it really covers the five year term. But uh, the contract we're using will need to be renewed each year starting in 2023. I'm sorry. So you, so you said the annual licensing costs or, you know, the ongoing annual is. 445,000 for the software. 445,000, but we had the one time implementation costs. Correct. The, the current expenditures of 822,000 total. Right. And then at some point later this year, when we're ready, we'll uh, we'll purchase 200 time clocks for about another, uh, let's see, $360,000. And and those will have an ongoing annual maintenance or uh, support fee of about 85000 So there'll be uh, about $525,000 recurring uh, licensing fees apart from the one time implementation and and the purchase of the time clocks. And when you say purchase additional, you're referring to licenses to expand? We're uh, well, we've per this. The licenses include all 22,000 employees, which is a, a an enhancement over our original implementation which just covered about 5,000 employees. So this will allow us um, within this price to bring on all the other employees that haven't uh, had access to the software originally. So that's already built into this. But for the same 
same annual cost. It's not. This, yes, correct. It's, no additional uh, expansion fees for the licenses. OK. I may have another question, but if anybody else does, that, that's all for now. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. OK. Any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Ms. Hen, did you want to ask your question? No, I, I may chew on this and have questions in the open session, but thank you, Ms. Jones. I'm good for now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Mr. Dixit, if you could please thank proceed you. for the next contract. So good evening, Ms. Jones and members of the board. Uh, again, for the purpose of record, my name is Pete Dixit and I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. The first contract I have is JBO 715-18, and that's uh, requesting additional amount of $93,000 for purchase of vehicle batteries. These batteries are typically for automatic uh, and um, ride on floor scrubbers and for ground mowers, the skid steer and back hose. Uh, based on the spending pattern, uh, we need another $93,000 and uh, your approval is requested. Thank you, Mr. Sears. I had a quick question. You are modifying the contract by 93,000, but you're also ending it prior to March 31st, 2023 was the previous end date. And now it's January 31st. So I don't know the reason for that. Um, in a lot of cases, it's because of the uh, adjustment schedules if Miss Webster is here or, or George if you know the answer as to why the new end date is different than the prior end date. Um, I do not know that answer. Let me but uh, we will get that and um, let me just check quickly my reference. Committee members, did you have any other questions while Mr. Sarris is looking that up? Yeah, I don't have that, but we'll present that to the board for tomorrow, um, along with some information on the uh, timekeeping system. OK. okay yeah. uh, thank you, Mr. Sarris. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is MVU-503-16, and this is for modification to electric motor repairs. A lot of these motors are used in HVAC systems, and we have been uh, working on those systems to improve. Uh, so the request is to add $891,000 uh, to a $2 million contract. There is no extension of contract recommended. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Sarris, please proceed with the next contract. So the I'm next sorry, contract. Mr. Dixit. <laughs> that's okay. I understood what you meant. So the next contract is JBO 702 22. And that's for repair parts for grounds equipment. And this is consent to assignment. So there is no additional money needed, no adjustment to time. It's the name of the company is from Security Equipment Company to Gathersburg Farmer Supply Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is ASI 812-22, and that is for improvement to bus facility at North Point. As part of our improvement program for transportation facilities, this is one of the projects that was um, identified by 
Transportation Department, and we are adding two bays uh, along with the equipment that's needed to support the, those two bays at North Point. Uh, there are three bidders for the contract, uh, so your approval is requested uh, for North Point bus facility. Committee members, any questions? Uh, Mr. Dixit, I do have a quick question on this one. Um, we heard during the budget session about some of our um, facilities not having running water. Is this one of those facilities that does not have running water? So fortunately, this one does, but we are looking at other facilities uh, that do not have running water. Uh, we had meeting with uh, Mr. Grimm today, as a matter of fact, and trying to uh, identify the work that's needed. All of the work that has been done in the past is based on a plan which was prioritized by transportation and for which funds were available. We are looking at that plan and adjust it to meet the new needs. OK, thank you. Um, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA 114-22, and that's for the running track uh, at Parkville, Pikesville High School. This is a grant funded project. The track uh, is not in good condition, and we were fortunate to get funding through a special grant um, uh, proposed by the local elected officials. So there are four bidders and lowest bidder is AT&T Sports. We are requesting your approval for that contract. Mr. Dixit. Yes, sir. Uh, Merrill Plate. Uh, I believe if I remember correctly that this particular board exhibit has been pulled due to a um, purchasing having some difficulties with the. Uh, this particular contractor providing the proper documentation. So what we'll do, we thank you Mr. Plate for sharing that. Um, we are hopeful that we are, will get the results of so this approval is pending receipt of those documents uh, from the contractor. Thank you Mr. Dixit. Do you think that will be um, provided by tomorrow's board meeting? I don't believe so. Um, if we do, we'll share that. If we don't, we'll mention in the board meeting that this approval is only subject to receipt of those papers. All right, so I'm going to separate this out with that contingency. Um, committee members, any questions? Ms. Jones. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pete, can I go ahead and ask you a couple questions in regards to this, even though you're going to pull it? Sure. I noticed that under the alternates, there's a two and a three, but there's no mention of the pole, pole vault pit. And I was just curious why that was excluded. Any idea? So we had three add alternates. Um, one was three millimeter layer of structural spray for high jump area. Right. Item two was mill and remove three eight inch thick layer of rubber from the rubber from the top of the existing rubber surface at the high jump area. And that uh, alternate, I believe, are included. That's included in the scope of work. Alternate three was remove existing sand at long jump and triple jump runways, and that was accepted. So those two alternates were add alternates were accepted. So you so you think that the pole vault pit, the pole vault area, is just not included in this contract? So. That would be a long runway with another big piece of of surface where they would put the mats in order to jump go over the over so the me, uh, crossbar. So let me share with you the scope of work. So under the base bid, removal of existing rubber surface from running track, long jump and triple jump runways, demolition of pole vault runway. Construction of new pole vault runway, installation of new rubber surface on running track, long jump and triple jump, jump runways and pole vault runway, painting okay. marking on running track. 
So that all work is included. Does that okay. take care of the work that you had in mind? Yes, yes, yes. So and, that, and that's, I, in, that's included in the base bid. OK, and then I had another question. Does your department keep up like a master list of these tracks and when somebody needs repair and and years and years ago and I just years and years ago I, I was told that I was on and I say I when I was the athletic director at Chesapeake High School I was told that Chesapeake High School was on the list to get a new track a replacement track and then when I inquired about it then I was told well you moved down the list uh, so it cost us a couple more years who control is is there a master list of all 24 high school tracks and 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 their priorities and the replacement uh and do you control that does the office of athletics control that or do they give input into it of course so there are a lot of questions there let me try to i'm sort sorry out. i'm sorry oh, that's okay so number one repairs are done by us on a regular basis based on any repair request when it comes to replacement, that has to be uh, a capital funded project or a grant funded project, or it is included in renovation or, and or construction of new high school. We have also received a similar question from Mr. Kuhn, and I'm trying to provide that response to that question. So there is no uh, plan for replacement of tracks, but Tracks are replaced if the funds are available or if the special grant funds are received. Now, why there is no plan is the competing priorities. So if you remember from my IPAS, there was a gap of more than $2 billion between what is needed out there and what is what is the and and the and the revenue stream for the lack of any other word. So a lot of these projects that do not impact the classroom directly, they have fallen behind. Site work and track are some of those items. Uh, we are hopeful that with the new money coming in through Build to Learn and with superintendents continuously working with the county executive and getting the support for it, we'll be able to get more and more funds that we should be able to take care of some of the tracks. OK, and, and I just want to say this and then I'll conclude. I occasionally go to Kenwood and jog their track. Their track is horrendous. I mean, it's really and, and I'm saying that based on my professional experience. It's it's got to be a safety factor. I'd be real curious to see if they even host any track meets because that track is so yes. just so torn up. It would be it would be a real issue if, if somebody got hurt on that track from trying to hurdle or whatever. OK, thank you, Mr. Dixon. So there should not be any unsafe condition. We'll definitely take a look at it to make sure that it is safe. But the condition could not be perhaps as good as a new newly replaced track. Yeah, and I think the key would be when you talked about the safety, if they're not scheduling track meets this spring at Kenwood. Now, I don't know their schedule. If they're not doing that, that's a heads. That's an alert right there that somebody's made the decision that that track is so unsafe they're not hosting it. But then on the flip side, those kids are still going to be practicing on that track every day. Yeah. Uh, so even though they're not, maybe not holding competitions, and I don't know the status of that, but if they're practicing on that track the other, every day, then that's another issue too. Mr. Dixon, thank you very much for answering my questions. Thank you. Ms. Joes? Yes, go ahead, Ms. Hinn. Thank you. Um, I'll follow up Mr. McMillian's comments with with the same for Perry Hall High's track. Um, it's so unsafe, it's unusable. They are not holding meets. Um, the middle school and the high both have amazing track teams. They haven't been able to use it. Mr. McMillian and I went out and examined it and it's it's missing um, such pieces of the, the surface that that they can't run on it. It's it's unsafe. So I thank him for asking the questions. I had the same ones um, is how do we replace it? And and I have a question with regards to the grants. Are these pri considered privately funded projects? Are they state grants? Um, what how are these projects being funded? So these are state grants that local elected officials have been able to get through their effort at the state level. This is not private source of funds. So um, I understand 
your concern about tracks. Uh, you can be sure that we'll be working on it. But as you know, we have competing priorities. For the last few years, our priorities have been seats, air conditioning, and now the priority is ventilation. So if you look at all the money, uh, our focus is in taking care of health needs and taking care of state mandates and taking care of the classroom environment. So the future, we are optimistic. All of the new schools, renovated high schools, get new tracks automatically. For new construction, you mean, or renovations? Or, or renovations. So schools um, that were renovated, they got nice uh, new tracks. In most of the cases that I can remember. Is, is that a requirement for all renovations, Mr. Dixon? It's not, it's not a requirement, but we try to add it uh, because that's the time we have some flexibility. So one of the questions I've been asked is, um, well, although that was a privately funded project, never mind. I was going to say they, um, the boosters raised money for their own turf field and could have, you know, done the track at the same time, but would have had to uh, have raised. Mr. Alfman, do you have a point of order? Additional? Yes, uh, I, I thought we were dealing with this one contract. I, 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 this is a very good discussion, I, but I don't think it's appropriate because we're dealing with the Pikesville track. I think all questions ought to be about the Pikesville situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alfman. Ms. Han, if you could keep your uh, questions related to the contract um, 18 Pikesville. Yes, and it is a grant funded contract. So my question had to do with the funding source and it, Mr. Dixit answered it. So that's all I had. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any more questions, committee members? Go ahead, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you. Most of my questions have been answered already, um, but I just wanted to highlight something really quick. The, the source of funding being a grant that was um, directed from someone in the legislature is why this project is happening. Is that correct? That's correct. And from time to time, we get grant funds through legislators uh, for specific work. Sure. OK, I, I just wanted to clarify that because I was curious and my question you know, about this was why this track? I mean, I know and I got an email and it was forwarded on to you about, you know, a junior at Towson High saying basically the track is unusable um, and, and there needs to be maintenance and replacement. So that's, you know, where my question comes from and I look forward to your response. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Um, Dixon, could you please proceed with the next? Three contracts for Red House Run Elementary. So, if you will recall, we presented a lot of construction contract for Red House Run, and these are the three remaining packages that I believe were not complete because of procurement related issues. So, JBO 712 21, uh, it's package 1A for general trade, package 7A for roofing and package 9A for gypsum. So now we have all of the work completed. We have lowest bidders and we are requesting board's approval for that. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Kuhn looks like he has a question. Thank you. I, I just have one general question. Um, I, I, I believe for both package 1A and 7A, um, I know at least for 7A, there was only one bidder. Um, so they apparently win the bid. Uh, you know, I'm curious, we, we do a lot of roofing projects. You know, we build schools constantly. We know the marketplace. Um, it, it seems any competitive not to have more than one bid. I'm just curious as to Mr. Dixit, what, what's actually happening and why are we only getting you know, one bid for, you know, I think it's over four, you know, three million, almost four million dollar project. So that's a very good question. I was going to give you a little explanation on the last exhibit, the next one, if I may. So uh, it, it's a good question. What we are seeing that there's a lot of construction work out there and there are not, there's not enough interest uh, in contractors because market is getting 
close to saturation. So we have to find, we have to be creative, um, and there are a lot of options. Either we reschedule the projects, or we um, find another creative way of doing it. As the board will recall, if you were board member a few years ago, we used to have a consortium, and under that consortium, we were doing a lot of roofing projects. And during one of the audits, uh, and the finding was that why don't you come up with other ways instead of only doing it through the consortium, even though we had a lot of success using that method. So when we looked at these contracts, one bidder and the cost, the other piece that is cost, construction costs are going up anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. And our experts are telling us that in the roofing area could be as high as 30 percent very soon. And we have a workload of 20 to 25 roofs that's coming in next uh, 12 to 18 months. So that's part of the answer that it is that uh, it's the matter of demand and supply, Econ 101. And with millions, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in the market now, uh, we are seeing the impact. So that takes me uh, to the last exhibit, which is part of what your question is, that what are you doing about it? So CWA 12022, and I didn't want to ignore your question. I wanted to provide more information. You'll see that we are requesting board's approval for a $30 million worth of projects using consortium. And that will give us the flexibility of using our regular design uh, bid and build, which we do, and also provide a totally different stream of consultant and contractors that these consortiums bring. And we'll see where we get the pricing advantage and where we get the timing advantage. And if we can do it cheaper in consortium, we'll do it. And if we get design, bid and build and we get more bidders, we'll continue to do that. Uh, I hope I answered your question. If I did not. Um, no, no I, I appreciate it. And, and thank you for going to the last item because it is kind of a, a big, big number. And um, and it definitely needs an explanation because I wasn't sure if you were just trying to buy a tremendous amount of roofing supplies, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and 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 how that was going to fall into the mix. So so when we see this, this doesn't necessarily mean we're going to use this consortium to build any roofs. That's it's just an option. It's an if, option. Uh, okay. And this option is in the consortium method. The, the vendor will design, they will do the bidding, they will share results of the bidding with us, they will comply with all our requirements. And uh, the advantage is that they will have different set of consultants, different set of contractors that normally do not bid on our contract. So hopefully we'll have more than one bid. All right, thank you. So with that, I'll ask you the approval of CWA 12022. Um, uh, so that we have the flexibility and hopefully we can improve the delivery quality and the price of roofing projects. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, um, do you have any more questions? Hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 22 be moved to the full board for approval. Contract 18 will be approved contingent upon purchasing office receiving required documentation. So moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there a second? I'll second it, McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, the question is to approve contracts 1 through 22 for board action. Contract 18 is approved uh, contingent upon the purchasing office receiving the required documentation. Ms. Slade, please call the roll. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Hen. Yes. Mr. Kuhn. Yes. Mr. McMillian. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Yes. And Ms. Jose. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Um, thank you, Mr. Dixit and Mr. Saris. So the last item on the agenda, I'm sorry, there being um, 
five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through 22 will be moved forward to the full board. Thank you and good night. Good night. So the mm -hmm. last item of the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee will be held on Tuesday, April 5th, 2022 at 4 p.m. prior to the board meeting. Uh, this is a change in the schedule and has been posted online. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Good night. Good night.